Hello, and welcome to the Groovy Writer Podcast, where we explore how to find your writing groove, regardless of your circumstances. I'm your host, author and MFA instructor, Nicole McGinnis. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Groovy Writer Podcast. I'm still kind of working on getting my stride with the podcast, honestly. I've been on a little bit of a break between classes. I have a manuscript turned into my agent. So these past couple weeks have actually been kind of a good time for me to think about, you know, the direction of the podcast and what I want to say and how I want to structure episodes. And what I've kind of come down to is this. I think as things occur to me, especially when they're things that I have talked with writers about quite a bit in the past, talked with students about, dealt with in my own life, I'm just going to kind of go with it. I'm just going to kind of do episodes based on that. And we'll see if that if that sort of holds or not. I'm, I'm a little bit fluid with my approach. And today, that's definitely what I'm doing. I'm kind of just going with where my, my head is at as they say. I wrote a blog post today on my website, which if anyone's interested is NicoleMcInnes.com. And it was it was an actually an older post that I had created and never posted. And it centers on a theme that I tend to come back to a lot. I tend to come back to it in my own writing. I definitely come back to it regularly with writing students and just with other writers in general, even if they're not my students. I think it's just a pressing issue. And the post, if anyone is interested, is called Life is What Happens. We know the rest of that quote, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, right? My line is life is what happens when we're busy running around like headless chickens. Most of us who are writers don't have a patron. I guess some of us do. I was listening to a great talk today on YouTube, actually, I need it was um it was editors in I think Banff it was like the Banff Writers Conference up in um, Canada they were talking about this how hard it is for writers maybe more so than ever because it's it's hard to get published and um, publications are typically offering like if you're a mag you know an article writer for magazines they're typically offering less money per word etc cetera, etc cetera. and they actually were having a serious discussion about yeah some writers have some sort of patron they they maybe are they married someone wealthy for example they don't have to work for a living basically but i would say and i and i have known those writers by the way and and i think in one in one sense they're to be envied time wise the time that having money can buy is really pretty extraordinary that said the vast majority of people writers included that i know and that i work with don't have some sort of patron. They're not just sitting around um, on their fainting couch thinking up wonderful novels to write. You know, most people, many people have um, bills to pay, maybe kids, maybe parents they're taking care of. There's so many different responsibilities in life. And frankly, these responsibilities can leave us drained. They can leave us drained physically creatively. And of course, that second one is is the biggie. If we come home from a long day of work and we think, okay, dinner's already been eaten by the family, the little kids are in bed, and now I finally have half an hour at nine o'clock at night to sit down and work on my novel. That is rough. I've been there. Many of you have probably been there. And so the question I pose in my blog post is how do we dare presume to build a writing life? And I can only speak to my own experience about this. And one of the things that that I've done is learn to um, take sort of a long range view of what I'm calling the shifting landscape of life. Life comes in and in phases. Those years when I had two little kids, and was trying to right, that was really challenging because A, I don't want to shortchange the kids when they're little. They need a certain amount of mom energy and the smaller they are, the more they tend to need. And yet 
how would I uh, hold back or maintain some energy to have it left over for the writing? That was hard. And honestly, some days were more successful than others. And I think accepting that is huge. So knowing that certain times of life, um, so having little kids, anytime I was going through any kind of a major life change, whether it was a overall positive change, moving to a, a, a new place that was great, or you know, getting a new job, something that was positive, but that still, again, took a certain amount of life force, for lack of a better term, it's hard. And if you're a writer, you know that feeling of the writing starts to feel like it's falling by the wayside. And that can be frustrating. And then that can sort of lead to one of those spirals of, oh, why do I bother? What am I thinking? I don't have the energy. I'm being a bad mom or I'm being a bad employee or whatever it might be. I think just accepting that we really can only do so much with the hours that we have in each day um, is huge. And, and for me, I can't speak for everyone again, I can only speak for myself, but reaching that level of, of acceptance, and again, it sort of ebbs and flows sometimes, but reaching that level of acceptance was and continues to be huge for my ability to relax. And then when I'm in a state of mind where I'm relaxed, I tend to write more and better quality work. So that's something to think about is, you know, looking at where you are in life, accepting it, asking yourself, is this a permanent situation? Or is it gonna, is it gonna change? You know, kids grow up, jobs change, responsibilities change, etc. Also, as I bring up in this blog post is learning to streamline areas of my life that might not on the surface have a whole lot to do with writing. But when I take the time and streamline them, and, and some are smaller, some are bigger, it can actually have a huge net impact on the writing, the quality of writing, the time I'm able to write, my mindset when I am writing. Some of the things I bring up in this post are taking control of finances. Finances, whether we like it or not, and as artists, sometimes we, we tend to divorce ourselves a little bit from the realities of finances. But that doesn't, that's not sustainable. Finances are important and I think having a healthy attitude toward our finances and an ability to really manage those finances is one of those things that can have a huge impact on writing. We hear often that finances are one of those biggies when it comes to say couples getting divorced. One of the big reasons this often happens or so I've heard is because of finances, people can't agree. And if we think about it, it makes sense. Money may seem like a, a shallow thing or maybe not that important, but really the reality is in this world, the lack of money or the inability to, to meet someone on your, your entwined with on common ground with money ties into, for many people, some very deep issues that might not on the surface seem to have much to do with money, but they do. And I would venture to say that the same is true for those of us who are quote unquote married to our writing, to our creative processes. If the money situation is out of balance, let's say we're spending more than we're bringing in, or we don't have a job that is able to create a sustainable lifestyle, or we're, we're really um, so attached to our money that we're just, we're very clenched about it, for example. There are, of course, a million different attitudes to have toward money. But anytime things are sort of out of balance, maybe not the healthiest, there's not there's not um, sort of peace there, or uh, I think just balance is the best word to use. There's not balance there. Just like it affects a marriage, just like it can affect uh, different kinds of relationships and as in including our relationship with ourself, I am here to say that I know for a fact for me, it can have a huge effect on my writing. Um, I've actually become over the years a little bit obsessed with making sure that my financial house is as in order as I can possibly have it. I try not to I try not to actually get obsessed to the point where I am I'm glad getting clenchy in that way. But it did not take long for me to discover that managing my money well given the amount I take in, I'm hardly a millionaire, but I'm also not, you know, um, poverty stricken, but managing the money that I do have and that I do make 
as well as I can, that is something that has been a benefit to my writing life and, and a sustainable writing life. I'm not talking about my writing on one day. I'm talking about a writing life. So if you have a little bit of a wonky relationship with your, your finances, with your money, Mm, I, I really recommend at least taking a hard look at it. A little bit of a heavy issue I want to bring up too is relationships in general. And again, there's, there's millions and millions of different types of relationships and qualities of relationships and all that. And I definitely, as so many people, so many writers I know, have been in situations where maybe a really a key relationship hasn't been the healthiest. And as anyone of a certain age who has been in any number of relationships knows, if you've been in at least one relationship, and you're say 40 or 50, you know, that sometimes just dealing with a relationship that's not optimal, can seem overwhelming. It's easy to go into this sort of avoidance mode. Maybe the relationship isn't very supportive. Maybe it's it's toxic. It's just toxic in some way, whatever that might be. And at whosever feet, am I phrasing that correctly? Those reasons might lie. Whatever the case, it's just it's just not optimal. Again, I'm here to report, speaking for myself, also for other writers I've known, when the air has been cleared and those relationships have been dealt with. And I don't mean to sound really ominous that way, but either, you know, let's say you you go into therapy with a person or maybe the relationship is definitely not something that's going to work and it's ended by one party or the other, or there's a big explosion that, that blows it up. When there has been a resolution to any relationship, and I mean, it can be um, a friend relationship, a work relationship, an intimate relationship, family relationship, whatever. In my experience, when there has been some sort of resolution there, and depending on the outcome, it might take time to deal with that resolution or maybe grieve that resolution if it was not a good end or celebrate the resolution if things turned around and we were able to make things work or whatever. When it's dealt with, when it's looked at, and time has passed, and and there's some closure, it's incredible, A, what that can do for one's um, energy and productivity levels, B, some of the wisdom that can come out of that, that I don't care what you're writing, you might be writing uh, board books for toddlers, and and not board, B-O-R-E-D, but B-O-A-R-D, or you might be writing literary fiction, or you might be writing nonfiction. I think that um, the wisdom born of experience on a, a deep personal level, and that is where relationships tend to take us oftentimes, when those things are dealt with, straightened out, even if there's a fracture or a, a cutting off, as hard as that can be, I think if we stay open to things, and I know this sounds a little woo-woo, I think if we stay open to the lessons and we stay open to at some point let's say things ended poorly we stay open to at some point looking back and having gratitude you know for that person for that person's role in our lives for what we learned i do believe uh, our relationships can be some of our greatest teachers those things are that is all very valuable in my view grist for the mill for writers so if i could just interject here anyone who is in a place where you're maybe struggling, where you're finding there's a a relationship that's affecting you, your life, your, your creative life, your ability to write, um, take heart and hang in there and, and try to be, you know, keep it real with yourself and, and to try to decide, you know, is this something ultimately that is going to be good for my writing? Is this something I need to deal with? Is this something that maybe needs to end? You know, what needs to happen here? But I encourage you to just hang in there. It can be really tough. And again, I, that's that's such an individual issue. But it is something that, hey, writers are people too. So we deal with all of these things. And as a side note, um, in my personal experience, I've also found that, you know, when you can when you can move on, and uh, this is starting to sound more like a therapy session than a writing podcast, but uh, when, when you can move on, and again, it might just be a toxic work relationship, it might not be this heavy uh, relationship with a spouse or, or family member, but when you can move on from it and in a way that is um, healthy, 
it's really sort of I don't know. Can it can really infuse things with some great energy, and often there are uh, you will discover there are sort of a classic principle. Oh, here's the kitty to come and visit us. It's sort of a classic principle that you know when one door closes, another door opens. A little bit of a cliche, but I have really found that that when I have opened myself up to more healthy relationships that were more supportive of the writing, the life in general, uh, just the well-being in general, boy that has had huge, I don't even want to call it ripple effects, because it's just a direct infusion of energy and good stuff um, that, again, has had not just a beneficial effect on the writing, but just on my attitude toward the writing. And as I, I will talk about, and I've, I've already talked about in this podcast, but I will, I know I will continue to talk about this. Yes, she's a Siamese. She's super loud. Um, the attitude toward our writing is foundational in my view for so many of us when it comes to building a writing life. So money, relationships, and finally, I want to talk a little bit about just a discovery I've made over the years insofar as the value of refining and simplifying my vision for what I want my writing life to be is concerned. So what I mean by that is having an understanding, change is inevitable. Change is life. Life is change. Life changes every day. I, at one point, had a very sort of solidified vision of what I wanted my writing life to be. That served me in some ways because it helped me. (laughs) I don't know if stubbornness is a good characteristic, but it it tended to help me be stubborn enough and bullheaded, whatever term you want to throw in there, to uh, hang in there. You know, when I was a, a younger writer, first querying and querying trenches, trying to get an agent. And that process took a long time. It took several years. And then when it came to writing novel length manuscripts, you know, I was, I was stubborn. I, I didn't want to give up on projects, so I would write them. And then when it came to writing one that was strong enough to sell and then writing another one that was strong enough to sell. So that sense of having sort of a a solid, unmoving, kind of like an elephant sitting on a road, like not going to move until it's ready to move. That was sort of my attitude toward my writing life. But again, as life changed, as the years went by and I I went through stuff and I had kids and different job changes and different stressors and different things to celebrate, at some point it wasn't that really um, sort of stuck attitude toward my writing wasn't serving me. And I needed to learn to let go a little bit to develop sort of a a more nimble attitude toward the writing. And that is something that I believe can happen, but doesn't always just happen naturally. I definitely had to sort of pry my fingers off the steering wheel when I realized, hey, this isn't, it can take the fun out of writing for one thing to just be, to just have a very rigid attitude. And that could be hard to see when you're also seeing some success, thanks in part to that rigid attitude. But I would say if you start to see the signs that maybe it's time to loosen up a little bit, maybe it's time to to be a little more fluid, go with the flow, um, I really encourage you to do that. I think we can always go back to being more rigid when we want to be or need to be. I will say once I learned that I could have the ability and get better at being more fluid and being more flexible with my attitude toward my writing, I have never wanted to go back to that rigid mindset. But again, I I do understand that it had value at the time. Okay, so again, um, continuously refining and simplifying and working on the flow of my vision for what I want my writing life to be has been huge. Refine it, simplify it where possible, get your fingers off the steering wheel if it's time. Maybe it's not time yet, but consider that someday it might be time. And my litmus now for it, my litmus test for this stuff is, am I enjoying this? Am I having fun? The writing life can be 
it, it could be a difficult way to make money. So if, you know, I'm doing it for, I have to make money, I have to make money, boy, you start to be like the, the little boy on his rocking horse in that great short story, The Rocking Horse Winner. You become so laser focused on one thing that you realize, boy, I could be doing almost anything else for a job and really have a much more enjoyable experience. So am I having fun? That's that's one of my litmus tests. And it doesn't mean, by the way, that every time I sit down to work on a manuscript that I'm going to be just like, yeah, this is great, and have this big smile on my face. Sometimes it is grueling work. There are times when it's a bit of a slog. But if I can't look at my my writing life overall and go, this is pretty cool. This is, this is a journey. I don't know where it's going to go. Sometimes that makes me a little crazy because I like to know what's going to happen with this current project. That can be frustrating. But if I can at least look at it and go, all in all, this is worth it. This is a worthwhile use of my time and my energy. Then why? Why do it? And again, I see, especially younger writers, students, debut authors, so laser focused on must get published, must find that success, must find a readership. And again, I think that is an important element of it. But I would just say maybe don't try not to stay in that zone. And if you are in that zone and it's intense because you're trying to find an agent, you're trying to find a publisher, you're trying to get your self-published novel perfectly edited so you can release it, whatever it might be. If you need to be a little bit rigid overall, try to build in some moments where you can just relax and have fun and maybe step back and really give your pat your, give your pat on the self. Wow, really give yourself a pat on the back for what you're doing and the significance of what you're doing. If you're not getting the external praise, reviews, rewards, you know, that's okay refine your vision, simplify your vision. Why are you doing this? Do you need to make any uh, corrections? Do you need to do you need to tweak things a little bit so that you're enjoying it more, thus leading to a more sustainable long term life? Because day after day, you're looking back going, yeah, this is hard. But you know, I really dig this. This is fun. So that's what I've got for you today. I think I'm going to wrap this up. But if you have any thoughts, I would love for you to share them with me. I'm going to have all that information posted on my website. Again, that's NicoleMcInnes.com. And you'll see I'm a little bit um, up in the air right now with social media, just trying to find the platforms that will work best for um, getting this podcast out there. I've been on different platforms for years and years, and I'm just trying to find this again, gets back to being a little bit nimble, kind of loosening the grip because frankly, some platforms I've been on for years and had a little, quite a little bit invested and, you know, a lot of connections on there, but yeah, just trying to kind of see what's next with that particular aspect. And um, so I don't want to say right now where I will have everything listed because I'm not quite there, but um, look at my website and you'll see it. So anyway, thanks for being here and I look forward to next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Groovy Writer Podcast. You can connect with the podcast on my website at NicoleMcInnes.com and on Instagram at The Groovy Writer. The intro and outro music is Retro by Wayne Jones. Until next time, write on, Groovy Writers. Write on. <laughs>